Hello, everyone in Facebook land, and welcome to day three of my 14-day uh, go live video challenge with Helen Martin and many, many, many other people uh, from around the world. Um, today, we are supposed to share something that some of you might not know about me. Um, some people that have been following me before um, know this about me or friends and family know this about me, but I thought I would share it for those of you that don't know anything about me. So um, coming at you live and my name there is Heather Edmondson and um, it's Wednesday at lunchtime. I'm just doing this quick on my lunch break and I have to head back to work here soon. So this will be a short one as well. Um, like I said, Heather Edmondson coming at you live from uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada, and it is starting to snow today and it is getting cold. So uh, welcome to winter, everyone here in Canada. Um, so to tell you a few things about me that, uh, like I said, some of you may not know or um, aren't familiar with me or have never caught me on a live before. Welcome, welcome. Um, jump on and send me a little message, a shout out to, and tell me where you are coming in from and I will pop on later and um, have a chat with you later. Um, if you do pop on my live here, I don't have my glasses, they're out in my car, so um, I can head back to work and they'll be able to see the um, chart when I get back to work. So if I don't recognize you right away when you jump on the live here, I will um, speak with you later. So um, for those of you that don't know, I am a cancer survivor. It will be going on, um, it'll be four years in the spring in April of 2020 that I have um, gone through my treatments and stuff. I was, um, a lump came up in the side of my neck here and I went to my doctor three separate times to uh, find out what it was. And um, he said, oh, don't worry, you're just a nurse and you're exposed to all kinds of germs and stuff like that. It's just a swollen gland, it'll go away. And it didn't go away. And I went back, like I said, two more times after that. And by this time my neck was getting um, quite a bit larger. Um, you wouldn't notice it because you don't know me from the, know what my face necessarily looks like so um as i was getting ready and doing my makeup putting my glasses on and brushing my teeth in the mirror i could see that my um, neck was becoming quite inflamed like i said most people didn't notice it by the end of the day my face would be puffy my eye would be partially closed because the lymph glands weren't draining the fluid that would build up in my system during the day so um after much arguing with my doctor, I finally said, well, can you just send me for an ultrasound? And uh, maybe it is all in my head. Maybe we can just rule it out that way. So um, I went out in the morning and saw my people that I usually see in the morning. And then I have the ability to um, be close enough to work that I can run home and have lunch at work. And I walked in and the uh, hospital in Calgary was on the phone and said, um, or clinic in Calgary, was on the phone and said, we can get you in this afternoon. I said, uh, well, I have to head back to work and do my charting, so how about tomorrow? So this is uh, December 10th of 2015 that I took the day off and went up to Calgary. My daughter took the day off and went with me because my husband was away visiting his brother. And we went up there and got yelled at by the radiologist. Um, why have you left it this long? It looks like Hodgkin's or not Hodgkin's lymphoma because it's a solid mass and it had a border around it. But if you've ever looked at an ultrasound, it's all grays and dark grays and blacks and everything like that. And unless you know how to read one of those, you, um, you wouldn't know what you were looking at. So because my head was turned away from the the camera my daughter was sitting in the corner and she could see what was on the camera and she could see this lump that the, the radiologist radiologist tech had found and she said okay i see something i need to go get the radiologist so me being um, a nurse i know that when they have to go get a radiologist that there is definitely something there that they found and uh, then your start heart, your heart starts to race a little bit, your blood pressure goes up, and then the radiologist came back in and did some more uh, with the ultrasound wand and said, uh, why have you left it this long? It looks like Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and that's pretty serious type of cancers, and you, um, you need to get back and talk to your doctor. I'm going to give him a call right away as soon as I'm done with you here, and then we will make some steps to move forward. So um, long story short, I got back to Medicine Hat, got a hold of my doctor because I was having all this stuff racing around in my mind and I wasn't really focused on my job. 
at work. Um, I didn't want anybody to know other than my boss at work what I was going through because I didn't know at that time what it was. I didn't know that it was a cancer. So, um, of course, over the Christmas holidays, um, surgeons have less access to the um, surgical suites because they cut down hours and staffing and stuff like that. So I had to wait from the beginning of December till the 13th of January, Friday the 13th, as you can believe, and um, wait for my surgery so that I could get in to have a surgery. So they went in and they removed this this lymph gland, which was by the time they removed it, it was about the size of the end of your big thumb. Um, and then you have to wait again to get the results. So we went back a week later and they did have the results and it turned out to be uh, squamous cell carcinoma, but it wasn't the primary site of the carcinoma. So and a week later, I am having another surgery. I'm having my tonsils out, not both tonsils, just the one tonsil because the doctor says he didn't want to open me up to any more uh, uh, access to infection. So I said, well, you're in there anyway. Why don't you just take them both out? I don't need them anyway. But he said, no, we'll just do the one side. Um, then we're waiting again for the, for the results. And every day feels like forever, even though it's only a day or a week or a few days to find out your results. It, it painfully feels like forever. Um, Go back to the doctor it's not got any cancer in the tonsil so now we have to go looking for the cancer um, and wait again to get into the tom baker cancer center in calgary which took another month to get in there um, by this time now i'm not working i'm off work and at home and not having anything to busy my brain with so it goes round and round in your head okay what is this how serious is this um, am I going to be around for my husband? Am I going to be around for my kids? Am I, is this a death sentence? Like what, what is all this? So um, I started treatments um, March, all of March and two weeks of oh, all of, last two weeks of March and all of April of 2016, where I had radiation every day for five days a week, Monday to Friday. And I had um, a dose of chemotherapy every Tuesday. So Tuesdays, I'd be feeling good because I'd be filled full of IV. They'd give me an IV liter of IV fluid before the chemo and then the chemo and then a liter of IV fluid after the chemo. And it would take about four hours for this whole thing to um, be done. And like I said, because they give you some steroids and stuff, you'd feel really good. And by Friday morning, I would be throwing up. And when you have to go through radiation for head and neck, you have to wear a mask that completely covers your face. And it is bolted down to the table with a, a ridge around this mask, bolted down to the table so that they make sure they line you up perfectly straight every time um, with the lasers and the radiation table um, to make sure that they are radiating in the exact same precise spot every time to kill that cancer. So they did find the cancer. It was on the base of my throat, on the base of my tongue, sorry, in the, in the bottom of my throat, right in front of my vocal cords. So when they were doing some of this testing, you could, I could look at the screen, um, which was on like a TV screen, and you could see my vocal cords closing as I was breathing in and out. You could see them, and it was right in front of them. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I'm a nurse. This is so cool. And then you realize, oh, my God, it's not so cool because it's me. And that, that's <laughs> kind of scary. So um, they did some biopsies and then I started the, the radiation and chemotherapy. I participated in a trial so that other people that are going through the squamous cell carcinoma like I am or I did um, may not have to go through as much radiation as I did. So it ended up, I think they said it was uh, 60 rads of radiation is the measurement that I had done and they can only do it in small doses because it's all on your face and on your neck so from here all around to my ears all the way around the back and down to my collarbone uh, radiation occurred um, so I was burnt raw um, when it healed up it felt like a baby's bum it was all brand new skin but uh, as I was going through it it was raw and the tendons on the side of my neck um, became completely open and raw and bleeding and I had to have dressings around my neck and that was the only time a lot of people knew that I was sick. They they would come up to me and compliment me and say, oh, you're looking so good. You're losing so much weight and stuff. And they had no idea how much I was going through or that I was really sick. 
Um, my hair came out across the back. It all fell out from the radiation. And uh, the type of chemotherapy that I had, I didn't lose all of my hair. The type of chemotherapy that a lot of uh, people that go through breast cancer have, they do lose their hair. So that's when they then most people notice that they are actually sick. Um, so like I said, yeah, most people didn't believe that I was sick. And um, sometimes even my family didn't believe that I was sick because I had to live away from them. I had to live three and a half hours away from them and stay close to the hospital where um, uh, to the Tom Baker Cancer Clinic where I was having treatments. Um, only only my uh, two daughters were able to come up at different times and stay with us and see, <clears throat> sorry, actually how sick I was. Uh, I'm getting a little emotional here, sorry. Brings back some uh, awful times, so. Um, sorry about that. I forgot to bring my water over here, so now I'm choking. I have to drink uh, fluids all the time because now I don't have the same amount of saliva. I um, have to chew, chew on gum or suck on a candy to keep that saliva in my mouth. Uh, my speech wasn't affected because they didn't remove the tumor on the base of my tongue. They just radiated it. So if they would have removed part of my tongue, then I would have had to have gone through uh, speech therapy and all that, it would have been uh, even longer journey. So after I had gone through all of that and was just about ready to go back to work, I was going to physio to get back my strength because cancer is a greedy thing and it takes all of your good muscles. It doesn't take the little fat roll that you might have around your belly or the fat bit that's hanging from your arm. It took all of my muscle right down to the bone. You could see the bones in my arm and in, in my forearm. I had no muscles left in my thighs. I couldn't walk from here to the bathroom or to the bedroom without having to hang on to things. Um, so now I am very serious about never being that sick again. I um, exercise pretty much every day. I track what I eat so that I make sure that I'm getting enough nutrition in because when you go from being able to eat to not being able to eat or keep anything down and you lose 42 pounds, oops, I'm going to knock my stinking computer over. Um, you lose that much weight, you realize how important it is to stay healthy. And I thought I was pretty healthy. I never smoked. I drank occasionally. I was a swimmer and I played baseball and I did activities with my kids and we ran and we biked and we camped and we did everything and I still ended up sick. So being a nurse, I've been on both sides of the coin now. I think I can relate a little bit better to um, people that are going through some serious illness. I can understand some of the pains and troubles that they have had to um, deal with and go through. This morning, I was actually at a, a client's and was actually talking to her about can her cancer treatment that she was going through or starting to go through. And she was very thankful that she was able to talk to somebody that has been there and gone through it and is now on the other side of that and has a goal to work towards. Um, I uh, went over with this person that set themselves set themselves something to look forward to, set themselves um, something to pick at. Uh, something that they they would like that special in their life. I, uh, I kept saying to myself, I have too much living left to do. I have, uh, at that time, only one grandchild, and now we have three. So uh, I want to be there for them. I want to, I wanted to get back to my full-time career as a nurse and as a wife and a mother and now a grandma. So I want to be there for that. So for those of you who hadn't known that and known my story before. That's that's kind of much it, kind of much it. I can see that a bunch of you have commented. Like I said, I don't have my glasses on. I will re reply to you later today. And I've got to head back to work. So uh, thanks for so much for everybody popping on, listening to my journey. Um, if anybody ever needs help or is going through something like this, I have a good ear. I can listen. I can help you through. Um, some of those tough times and even just be somebody that'll listen to you for some of this stuff that you go through. So take care, everyone. Have a good, awesome rest of the day, whatever time of the day it is for you. And we will catch you tomorrow on another Go Live. Bye-bye.